I'm going to start here in a few minutes. I'm just getting everything set up. I am live on Facebook and I am live on Instagram. Hey, Tori. I started a few minutes early so I can get set up um, and get people to come watch. Hey, Sandy. So this is my first uh, Metaphysical Monday Madness uh, live video. I'm live on Facebook right there. And I am live on Facebook, I mean Instagram right here. Sunrise Tora Spooky. I'm just going to call you, that's Tori, that's my youngest, um, and she is going to hopefully be my guest uh, host next Monday. Um, we're going to be, um, I'm going to be teaching her how to do uh, beginner tarot spreads. Jupiter's here too, let me see if he'll let me get him. Come here, baby, come here, come here, I've got Cussie on the video, come here on the video. Here we are. Here we are. Hey, Veronica. Look, I got Jupiter. See, there's Jupiter. There's Jupiter. He's in here with me. He said, I gotta help. He's actually laying on the craft table right now. Alright, I don't know who all is going to join us, but I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, so, for the very first Metaphysical Monday Madness live video, um, I am going to do a little lesson on not magic. Um, I have a few little supplies out and I'll show them as I get through um, the information. Alright, so, um, what is not magic and how is it used? Um, not magic is also known as cord magic. It involves casting spells using the physical act of tying and or untying knots to bind or release spells. Not magic requires a piece of string, um, in which we use, choose to use rope, cord, uh, yarn, uh, floss, the embroidery floss, um, wire, chains, vines, sinews, scarves, twine, thread, and ribbons. I also have some like lace ones. Um, yes, watch whichever um, one is easier for you. Thank you for watching. Um, so, different types of not magic. Um, oh, for the record, I got um, the information for multiple sites, and I actually have a um, Pinterest board that has a bunch of information um, on it as well. And um, if you haven't followed me on Pinterest, it's um, Living a Balanced Life in Texas, um, and I have like a gazillion boards. All right, so different types of knot magic. There are, there are as many different specific methods for casting a knot magic spell as there are magic users. The defining factor is that at least one knot is tied in the course of the spell and the knot serves as a representation or container for the spell. Knot magic spells are often binding spells as the symbolism of tying a knot suits the symbolism of restricting or controlling activity one may use the tying of the knot to symbolize tying the hands of an individual whose actions are helpful or binding someone's mouth shut. 
For these spells, a piece of string from a person's clothing or even a braided lock of their hair can be used. But body spells aren't as often used against individuals as ideas in natural phenomena like the weather, disease, and etc. For example, not magic can be used in healing spells to bind pain or inflammation temporarily to allow the patient to get some rest to be moved or fed. Once this is achieved, the knot can be untied to allow the natural healing process to resume. Since a knot can be untied, a knot spell can therefore be given an off switch by its creator. Simply untie the knot and the spell is broken. This must be spe specified upon its creation. Um, let's see what else we got. Um, so knot magic has traditionally been used by sailors to bind winds. Untying a knot to stir up a wind. Generally, three knots were used. The first untied would cause a gentle wind. The second, a strong wind. And the third would release a hurricane. This spell is still in use today. One example I have, oh, one example, the person I got this information from said, um, what um, let's see. I have seen involved going to a high place and speaking a chant, declaring the intention of the spell while tying the first knot. Blowing once upon the knot, once tied, and then repeating for each of the three knots. Blowing twice upon the second and thrice upon the third. Um, did y'all know that the custom of hand fastening is a type of knot magic? It is a binding of love between two people. Um, okay, so let's keep going. Some more um, types of knot magic. There's altar knot magic, which is you can incorporate knot spells into the candles you burn. Um, using candles in glass jars because the last thing you want is for your knot spell to burn away or your home to catch fire. Um, whatever your intention, create a knot spell and wrap it around your candles. If you like to take the magic with you, dip the knot in the candle wax, um, further sealing it, and wear it around your left wrist or ankle until it's time to return to the altar each week or whenever you perform your rituals there. Stone knot. Take a drilled stone that fits your spell and loop the cord around the stone before tightly securing the knot. This simply clarifies your, clarifies your intent and makes a nice looking wearable spell. These also make great gifts for both the magical or non-magical people in your life. If you are giving the knot spell as a gift, be sure to tell the recipient what the spell is for so they can focus the magic for themselves. Whether or not they practice magic, um, non-witches still gravitate towards amulets they believe bring them some kind of benefit. That belief then fuels whatever magic you've already done to them. Um, so I wanted to show an example real quick of, of a stone that had a hole in it. Um, of course, you can take a regular stone and drill a hole in it, but um, even more special are stones that have natural holes in them. I'm going to show Facebook there. I'll show Insta my Instagram people. Let's see. And this is actually called a hagstone, and um, I sourced this from the uh, lake by my house. And I'm actually going to create one of these um, stones, not spells, that I just read about um, here in a moment. Um, soaking. These are great for protection spells. Um, create a bath of salt water or diluted vinegar and soak your cord in this water before using it for your knot spell. You can charge the water with water safe stones, powders, or oils. If you're going to wear the knot, make sure the oils are safe for the skin. Before letting it dry and proceeding with your spell, if you want the knots to be extra tight, tie them while the cord is still wet. When dry, these knots will be still tighter than a drum. Good to use for when you want something to stay a secret. Um, two cords. These can be done a few different ways. If you'd like something to happen to you, like winning at the casino or getting a job, make one piece of cord represent the job and the other cord represent you. Tie them tightly together so what you want to happen is connected to you. 
If you're performing a love spell or trying to keep your partner close, the two cords can represent each of you in the relationship bound together. These knots can be sealed with wax or special attention should be and special attention should be paid to detail here. The color's length and number of knots should be a clear representation of you and your partner. Alright, Tori, I love you. Um, it, the video will be um, on Facebook, so you can finish watching it later. Um, and the next one is a banishing knot. Um, aside from the altar knots, this is what this person uses um, not magic for most regularly. Knots are binding by nature, and using them to stop someone else's actions is a no-brainer. She uses black cord, um, tie it in three knots, focusing on specific reasons why they want the person gone or to stop what they are doing. Then freeze the knot in a small ice cube. Inevitably, though, someone in the, ha the house will take the ice cube out of the freezer and ask, what is this? Then walk away, leaving the ice cube to melt in the sink. Not good. If you want this spell to be more permanent, go to your local hobby store and buy a tub of resin. Then use this to seal the knot in suspension indefinitely, thus freezing the person from bothering you again. Obviously, I didn't read this before the video, but that's a good idea, um, using resin as a substitute for the ice. Um, Alright, here's another one by the, from the same person called Smoking the Knot. Although I've never tried this personally, many witches run the knot through incense smoke or the smoke of a candle to bless the knot. This can be done before starting any work or as a final step after the spell is complete. If you're giving a knot spell as a gift, this would be a nice touch, especially if the knot is for protection or a gift for a child. Um, a braiding knot. Connecting three or more cords together can be done to bind a family or group of friends together, especially if there are stormy waters on the horizon. Hang it on the front door of the home or in the kitchen as a way to keep the group bonded together to thick and thin. Don't forget to braid in additional cords for your pets. Uncondi um, unconventional knots. Just because tradition dictates knot spells should be done using cord or string doesn't mean you should only use this technique. If you're a kitchen witch, bake bread knots or candy knots. If you're an earth witch, use the stems of leaves or strips of bark to make your knot spells. If you're a water witch, dip the cord in water before tying. And if you work with air, blow into each knot to infuse it with your intent. However you work best, you can find a way to work knot spells into your craft so you're more comfortable using them. Burning knots. Knot spells are easy spells to break. You simply untie them and the spell is undone. Of course, if you prefer a more dramatic ending to the spell, you can burn the knot instead. This method can be useful when, for when knot spells are supposed to be broken. For example, breaking bad luck, ending difficult relationships, or getting rid of bad energy in your life. Create a knot spell that represents whatever you like to get rid of and then set it on fire. Safely, of course, and bury the ashes. Um, one example of this actually is, um, I, that I've done was, um, breaking a, um, a bond. Um, I had a friend, um, that we were, we connected on, on a bunch of different levels. And then whenever I met my husband and we got married, he came back into my life and was trying to, you know, reconnect and it caused a lot of um issues so what i did was i did a um burning of cords um to sever our connection drawing knots um let's see usually Usually we see knots everywhere, um, usually as rep repurposed symbols, much like ruins. Original knot designs have deep roots, and even though they aren't tied with string, they still have power. The act of actually tying or untying knots is important, but the same process can be replicated by drawing a knot on a piece of paper. This allows you to get creative, making the knots as intricate as you want them to be, something that is difficult with cord unless you learned all the ways to tie knots. 
But a part of the beauty of these knots designs and sim is in the symmetry symmetry of them um, don't feel confined, confined by this standard. Now everyone is artistically inclined so simply draw a straight line at a loop or infinity symbol in the middle and continue the line. To untie the knot just erase it. Um, incorporating knots. When writing spells witches will often turn to the big threes. Candles, stones, and herbs. I know I do uh, but if you're short on any of the above or just want to try something new with your spells, add knots. Tie them around tarot cards to bind two courses of action together. Add them to the tops of jar spells to seal the jar with another layer of intention. Uh, gold and silver jewelry wire makes for beautiful knots and can be twisted around stones and candles. Tie a knot while reciting your spell, thus closing the spell in two ways. You can carry this spell with you wherever you go by binding it to a chain of knots and transforming it into a talisman. Not magic for relief. As a way to release any unhelpful or unwanted thoughts and ideas, start by thinking about what you want to release. Body issues, anger with coworkers, regret, a tie you have to an ex, or a friendship that are no longer beneficial to you. Not magic for Manifest, uh, mindfulness. Mindfulness is the practice of monitoring and becoming aware of your thoughts through being present in each moment. You can use not magic to help you recognize the thoughts that are beneficial to you and those that are not helping you. Not magic for manifestation. I lost my spot. Um, you can use not ma magic. For positive manifestation as well, the knot can hold on to your desires and wishes before you do this kind of magic. Make sure you are in a calm and relaxed mood. Get into a meditative state by taking several deep breaths and closing your eyes. Another form of uh, knot magic is stitchery witchery. Knot magic can also include certain crafts like knitting and crochet, cross stitch and needlepoint, embroidery, and any form of sewing. The reason this stitching magic is effective is because of the focused work, and if you're well practiced, stitching probably takes little effort and is likely something you highly enjoy. Also, this process is very meditative. Some find it soothes your nerves and creates a field of harmonious energy around you which can be utilized in manifesting. Alright, I have two spells here written, um, written down. Um, I'm going to read the first one and then um, I'll read the second one. Um, this one is called A Lover's Knot. Um, this spell is designed to be made by a pair who are already lovers. It's designed as an activity to bring you together and to remind you of each other when things get rough. Think of it as a magic reservoir of each other's love for when you can't be together or having a spat. Um, here I'd like to note that this is, could also be used as um, in friendships. Um, basically, it's just to take on a friendship bracelet. Each of you will make a bracelet for the other and place intentions into the bracelet you make. Your intention could be to protect them, to tie the two of you together, or to help solve a particular problem between the two of you. The important thing about this is that both parties participate and have discussed what they want out of the spell. Pick one and get nodding. With each nod that you make, Think and meditate about your intention, but this doesn't need to be a somber thing. Laugh and chat with your lover and really get the love flowing between the two of you. Brace for kisses and stuff are a good idea if you want. Use this as a chance to really get close with your partner. The emotion and energy that you have during this is going to stick, so no being mad at each other or arguing or nitpicking or talking about the dishes or anything of that nature. Take this time to just be in love. If you want, when you finish making the bracelet, you can let it charge in sunlight or moonlight and say an incantation or prayer to a deity over it. Whatever works with your practice. Now swap in where your new lover's knots. For any any reason you wish to undo the spell, each knot in the bracelet must be broken. This can be done by going through and untying each one, by cutting each one, or by burning the entire bracelet. A single knot left unbroken will still retain its power. Like I said, despite being named lovers or not, this spell can be used by any pair of people or even a group. Friends, siblings, parents with their children can all modify the spell to their use. 
In a group, you can have a rotation of sorts. Each person begins a bracelet, making an inch, and then passes it in one direction around the circle, where the next person will make another inch and continue passing it. Each bracelet will have to be made in part by every member of the group. The next spell that I have on here is um, called the Lucky Knot Spell. Um, another good example for the uses of knots in magic. The spell works a little differently than the last. Each knot is designed to be a pre-made quick release spell. You should choose a cord material that is easy for you to untie. Prep for this spell however you like. Cast a circle, consecrate your cord, call your deities, whatever. I'll pick a number for your spell. My first choice would be my lucky number, but use whatever number association you like. For me, I would choose uh, 9 because that is my power number. Begin by creating your first knot. This knot is your anchor. It sets the framework for the entire spell. Imbue it with the intention that each subsequent knot will be a holder. The idea is to have a spell attached to each knot, and as the knot is untied, the spell is released and activated. Once you finish your first knot, you can start on the rest of them. With each that you make, charge the knot with your intention. In this case, luck. You can do this in a number of ways. Meditating, chanting, incantations, prayers, all work. The incantation below is just an example of something that this person has used. Example, winds of fortune blow, let my good luck grow. Finish up in your preferred way. Close your circle, ground, thank any spirits that you work with etc. You can now keep the cord with you and whenever you need a little burst of luck before a test or interview etc etc just untie a knot. Alright so when I think of knot magic um, there's all those ideas but then there's also regular crafting and how you can incorporate <clears throat> uh, not magic into it. For example, I have some ideas fit written down here for uh, crochet and knitting. Um, you can crochet a small bag for your crystals, knit a blanket made with love for someone in your family or your partner, knit a custom tea cozy for your morning cup, um, crochet a doll, uh, make a bag for your pendulum, ruins, tarot, etc. Crochet a basket for a crystal to live in when you charge them outside. Knit a scarf, even put sigils of constellations or magic sniffles for extra power. Crochet socks with sigils stitched on the bottom to help you move silently. Um, knit a hat with sigils for mental clarity and warmth. Crochet a cozy plant pot cover for your plant babies um, here, and then now there are some fun sewing ideas for not, not magic uh, sew a bag for your vials and bottles um, make a small spell bag um, you can uh, to fill with herbs and stuff um, stitch a meditation blanket um, you can even alternate the colors of threads with chakra colors um, sew a cover for your grimoire then hand sew sigils in with the same color to keep prying eyes away. Sew a pillow for your pets to sleep on and have peaceful dreams. Make a cover for your altar. Um, choose a fabric you associate with cleansing or keeping away negative energy. Hey Melinda! Um, I'm just finishing up uh, on the Not Magic um, discussion. Um, I've gone through all the information already. Um, what I was going to do was I was going to create, um, even though she's not watching anymore because uh, of her phone, um, my youngest daughter, her birthday was on the 11th. So I'm going to take my Hagstone and I have some black cording. I'm just going to create her a little um, stone knot. 
necklace with some wishes in it for her. Uh, maybe protection because I didn't get to see her for her birthday. But like I said, there's yarn, uh, embroidery floss, some cording, um, even lace, hair. There's all kinds of different ways to do knot magic. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to let it hang freely. And then at the end, I'm going to do one. So those of you who are watching, um, have y'all incorporated knot magic into um, anything that you've done? Um, if you do crafting, do you use um, use it to? Do you feel that if, um, now that you know more about it, that you would incorporate it in? And there we go. Just a simple little necklace with not magic. Just a simple little necklace with not magic and I'm gonna give that to my daughter um, when I see her next um, is there any questions on uh, not magic that I that you, that I might not have gone over um, it's a lot of information like I said I do have a Pinterest board that has a lot of a lot more uh, spells on it um, that and other stuff that um, talks about not magic. I know I went through the information pretty quickly, but it will be um, saved on my, in I mean, not my Instagram. It'll be on Instagram for 24 hours. It'll be on my Facebook page though. Um, I'm gonna make sure it saves on there. So any last minute questions? It went by a little bit faster than I thought it would. But I do have a um, YouTube video premiering here in about 30 minutes on my channel, uh, Living About Life in Texas. Where is the cat? Hold on, let me get here. You're on, you're on this room. I will move the camera to the cat. There he is. He's here. Oh, he's sleeping. Keep her sleeping. Alright, so if there's no more questions, um, I'm looking for some who saw cats or dogs. If, so if there's no no more questions, I'm going to wrap this up so that I can um, go chill and put my phone on the charger to get ready for the um, YouTube video. So any more questions, uh, Sandy, whoever's watching on Facebook, uh, Veronica on uh, Instagram.
Alright guys, um, that's it for this week. Uh, next week, like I said, my youngest daughter is hopefully going to be my guest host and I am going to be teaching her some beginner tarot spreads because she has her own deck and she wants to uh, learn more than just the three. Uh, yes, Veronica, I am going to make some more live stream videos. I have a video um, premiering in 30 minutes. Hey, Andrea, I'm just wrapping up the video. But it will be posted so you can go back and watch it. Blessed be Sandy, I'll see if you um, go to my YouTube video. Alright guys, um, like I said, I'll see y'all next week.